Hello friends and viewers, welcome to Life Talk on another cooking edition of where we talk about and discuss and do the things that matter most in life. And once again, today's episode will be a cooking episode of another quick and easy meal that you can make that's probably maybe a family classic or maybe a family tradition in certain cultures. We're going to be making a version of galumpki. And I know that's not the easiest word to say. If you're watching this video and you want to comment below and tell us how you pronounce the word and spell it out for us, I've heard halupki, halumpki, which I believe is a Slavic version of the word, galumpki, guumpkis, all different ways of saying that. Of course, I'm Italian, so I'm doing the best that I can. And being Italian, my mom and I are going to show you a quick and easy way to make this wonderful rice and meat dish with cabbage by making a galumpki lasagna. That's what we're calling this. It's a very easy way to make it without rolling the cabbage and without stuffing it all up. It just takes a lot of time and is an amazing uh, meal. But we still love it and we want to enjoy it. And so we're gonna show you a very quick and easy way to do that. And it's a combination recipe from a lot of people who have given me galumpki and halumpki halapki recipes over the years. We kind of combined everything. And that made me think of our scripture for this episode. It's coming straight out of Philippians 4, and it's going to be verses 11 through 12. And it says, For I have learned, in whatever state I am in, to be content. I know what it is to be of need, to be abased, and I know what it is to be abound and have plenty. Everywhere and in all things, I have learned to be both full and hungry, both to abound and to suffer. And then if you go on to read verse 13, it says what? But I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So this just this idea of combining these recipes made me think of how life is a combination of ups and downs. But we can get through life and we can do all things because of Christ who walks with us each and every day, every step of the way. So. Without any further ado, I'm going to introduce my mom, Sharon LaBella, to give you our Golumpki lasagna. Hello, so this evening we're going to make my version of Golumpkis. So it's not your traditional uh, Polish Golumpki rolled in the cabbage, which is so laborious and I admire the way that they make them and I love them. But because I do everything very quickly, that's my nature, I decided to make a speedy Golumpki. And so what we have here in the pan is we have some hamburger and we have some chopped onion to your liking. I love onion, so I put a little bit extra. And I'm going to put just a little bit of olive oil because the meat will make its own um, oil or juice. And we're going to start to saute this on uh, medium heat, medium high actually. And we're just going to let that cook down until it's um, ready to be put onto the cabbage. And so, as you can see, I'm just going to saute this together until it's translucent and the onions are cooked pretty well and the meat is cooked. And then what we're going to do is take you over to the table in a minute and show you what I'm doing with the cabbage and the rice. Okay, so as you can see, if we can bring the camera a little closer here, this is cooking down rather nicely. And it's the onions are becoming translucent. It's got a little bit of a juice in there and I will cook that pretty much down. But I'm going to add a little bit of tomato sauce and uh, not a lot. So if you have a small can or you've got a little bit left over from some uh, dinner that you've served, just a, just a little bit, just to give it a little flavor and a little color. And so as we mix this up, It'll give it a little bit more of a flavor, a little bit more of a juice when we start to simmer this down. And add later on just a little bit of, you'll see, a little bit of Worcester sauce and some ketchup. And my favorite ingredient of all, tomato soup. That's what I love in our glumpies and it just makes such a beautiful flavor. Okay, so we're gonna let this continue to simmer and cook and I'm going to take you over to the cabbage. Okay so now we're over at the cabbage part of the deal and it was a huge cabbage and I still have this much left 
And what I did was I just sliced it down the middle, which you can see. And then I just began to peel like that the leaves off so that I have this well, as much as you want, but so that it looks kind of like this. Then I have ready my rice and I don't even cook it. I buy some type of already made where you just heat it up in the microwave. This happens to be organic Green Valley Jasmine rice, which I love. And I just heat that up for 90 seconds in the mic. I use a couple of packages, depending on how much meat I have. And this is three packages. And I just get it ready to be, to be added. And let me just come over to here and stir my meat, which is looking very good starting to simmer nicely and I did lower that down to medium on my new wave and this is what I've talked to you about before it's a really nice unit it has all your temperatures listed here if you want medium low medium high sear and so forth right now I'm down to medium and medium low which is on 260 my light here is not working but uh, I'm just going to let this simmer in for flavor to mix with the rice shortly. I just want it to cook a little bit more. But while I'm doing the cabbage, this is going to be almost ready. So what I'll do is I'm going to lower it down to medium low, just keep it simmering. But it's pretty much ready for filling. Now I have a pot of water here, which I'm going to salt. So that when the cabbage is cooking, it's nicely salted and you don't have to add anything to it. Okay, so now that we've got these leaves, this is probably, some of this would be ready to roll, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to start cutting this into some type of squares. Okay, so this is what I do. I just line the leaves up and cut them. into like squares or rectangles. Not really fussy about how I cut them because I'm gonna layer these in the bottom of a pan like lasagna noodles. So, you see what I'm saying? You cut them about like that, you can layer them nicely. So it looks like a petal of some sort. And even if they're small, they don't have to be uniform. I mean, I really cook just to get it in and done. That's how I like to cook. So again, you have different shapes, different sizes. You don't have to be fussy, which is why I like this recipe. And I just slice through the cabbage just like that. And you know when you when it cooks and layers out, it'll make a nice little layer for you. And we just do this until your pot is pretty full because it will cook down a little bit. My favorite leaves that cook the most are the greener ones. They, they come out really nice and tender. And if you see something that's really like thick and chewy like this part, I don't use that. But what I do do after I'm done with with the amount of cabbage that I want is I save all these hard pieces and I boil them until they get really soft in a soup. So that's what I use to make cabbage soup. What's left over from my quickie glumpy. See these nice little soft leaves? That's what I like. As many of them as I can find is what I use in the pan. And then these hard pieces like this, I save to go with this when I make the cabbage soup. Okay, so that's just about ready. I'll look through here to see. Here's a nice little leaf to see if there's a thin leaf that I know that will cook up nicely. And we're going to get this ready now to put on the stove. Now remember, the water is salted, and I'm going to put this on rather high because I want to get it cooking so that I can 
finish the rest of this for you. And I will put a cover on that. And that's probably going to have to cook, I would say, for about 30 to 40 minutes. You want to get it nice and tender because the softer the cabbage is, the quicker it will bake for you in the oven. And you don't have to leave it in so long. I try to get it so where it's, it's done and ready in 40 minutes or 45 minutes. But again, that depends on how tender you get your cabbage. If your cabbage is not really soft, then you're going to have to leave it in the oven for over an hour. Okay, so these two things are pretty ready. We talked about the rice. The rice is ready. And now I'm going to finish with the sauce and the soup and the ketchup and give you those ingredients. So we'll do that next. Okay, so here we are. And if we can bring the camera closer, I'm going to show you how I like to stop the cooking. See how I have just a little bit of juice in there? I don't want to dry it out completely because I like that for when I put it in the oven. But see how nice... And even the onions are cooked, the beef is cooked, um, and I chop it up pretty good so that everybody gets a bite of beef when they bite into the kalumki. Okay, so you can see here that it's ready to go. I'm going to shut this off while we wait for our cabbage, which has got a little bit ways to go yet. But I'm going to take you over to the table while I shut this off, and I'm going to show you the rest of the ingredients that we're going to be using. So, I have two cans of tomato soup, and depending on how much juice I have, I may add one more uh, can, depending on how much I need once I start to fill my dish. And I'm going to put my rice in here, get that ready. So, because we're going to add the hamburger mixture to it, I'm going to, as it cools off just a little bit. Now, in here, I have my two cans of tomato soup with about three quarters of a can of water. And it looks like I'm going to need a little bit more water because, as you can see, this is pretty, pretty thick. And I don't like it like that because it won't cover everything. It won't cover all the cabbage and all the meat. So, we're going to add just a little bit more water to get this a little bit more soupier. And as we bring the camera in, you can see that's a better consistency to give it the taste that it needs. If I don't have enough, I will add another can, as I said. Now, here I have a quarter of a cup of ketchup. And I'm adding that to my rice. I Some people use more ketchup. I don't only because I like the taste of the tomato soup better. Also, people are big on Worcester sauce for glumkies. Again, I'm not, so they use a lot more than I do. So what I do is I just put a few little sprinkles in there, like this, I don't even measure it, just to see that my rice is a little brown. And then I mix that together. I like Worcester sauce, but not if it overpowers the dish. I like it just to have that little bit of a tang. And we mix this together. Again, this is not your typical Polish dish, the way they do it. It's just a speedy way that I do it, but the taste is delicious. It's so yummy and so quick and not so laborious. So if that's what you're looking for, then I would try this. It doesn't take away from the fact that I love glunkies and I appreciate the people who make them. Okay, so now we're going to Add our hamburger mixture to the rice, and then I will stir that up as well. I'll get a get that ready. Smells good. Okay, and we're just going to mix this together now. 
I can eat it just like this, really. But the cabbage really does add that delicious flavor. So you can taste this to see if it's at your to your liking. I usually do because I want to be careful with the Worcester sauce. Now, at this point, we have not added any salt. So if you do taste it and it doesn't and it tastes like you want more salt, I would hold back, refrain from doing that until you add your tomato soup because that's very salty. Now I I make my food on the low salt side, so if you are you know want it a little bit more saltier, this is the time to do it. But I would be I would caution you to be very, very careful because the tomato soup is salty. Okay, so this is ready for the filling, and all we're waiting for now is the cabbage. But this is the place where you would taste it to see if you want more ketchup, to see if you want a little bit more Worcester sauce. Make it to your tasting, okay? For me, perfect. Okay, so here's we are. We're ready to put everything together. I've done the cabbage really nice and soft to my liking so that it cooks faster in the oven, as I explained, on 375. And we've strained the cabbage, and now we are ready to layer, just like we would a lasagna. So, I just take a set of tongs. Oops, one minute. We have to put the tomato soup on the bottom. So we're gonna ladle some of that in here. <clears throat> and just a little bit more. Now, like I said, this is two cans. This is the thickness that I like it. I don't have enough, I will get another can of tomato soup. That's what makes it easy. You don't have to worry about measuring things out too much. Okay, so we're, st we're starting to just place the cabbage in the dish. And you can see it's relatively soft. You might find some pieces that are harder than others, depending on where the cabbage pulled from, but I do try to separate it up like a lasagna. And I make a nice, you know, thick bottom so that it holds the, the, the uh, filling. See how nice, now that's a thick piece, so I'll, I, I may just put that aside for later if I need it. I like the thinner pieces. Okay, just a little bit more on that layer so that it holds the filling, as I said, particularly in the corners. Try to cover the bottom as good as you can and as flat as you can. Okay. And now we'll get ready for our filling. And you simply just layer it in. It smells so yummy. Hopefully we can get two layers out of this. Maybe not. So it doesn't look like I'm going to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a nice thick filling in here. And then what I have left over, I'll just make another little one. And I can freeze it or give it away. But I'm going to fill this one up really good because by the time I get the second layer of cabbage on here, it's going to be top, you know, the it'll spill over if I put too much. A little bit more and then I've got enough to make another one. Okay, now tomato soup. And again, you know, if you fill it too, too much to the top, guys, it will spill over. So what I generally do is I cover it with aluminum foil 
and then I place this on a cookie sheet so that it doesn't ruin my oven. Okay, and now we're ready for the next layer of cabbage or actually the final layer of cabbage. And again, you don't want to make it too much like a mountain because it will spill. Perfect. Looks like this is going to come out just the way I like it. See the see the leaves how nice and soft they are that means you don't have to cook it so long in the oven guys and then we'll put another layer of tomato soup on here and as I said cover it with foil and then place it on a cookie sheet 375 and I would say for 40 minutes um, but actually, I mean, we're, I'm a little hungry, so I might take it out a little early, but if you can leave it up to an hour or even a little more than an hour, it just comes together so nicely and soft and it cuts with a fork and that's what you want. Now I have another idea I want to talk to you about before I finish this. If you don't, if you have extra and you don't want to make another glum tea, you know the cabbage that I told you I had left over, you, you chop that up into little squares, like about two inches, and boil that up in water and put a little salt in your water. And you can put a little vegetable broth or a little chicken broth, but add some carrots, onions, celery. Then take your mixture that you have left over add that to your pot of cabbage soup and you'll have like a cabbage galumpke soup now here's the secret ingredient that's going to make that really good guess what tomato soup so you add a can or two depending on what you like to taste to the cabbage soup and probably a can of water half a can of water because maybe not because you just mix it around and see if it's nice and thin like a soup to give it that like pink orange color and you can taste it to see if there's enough flavor it is so good so you can throw this in with your leftover cabbage carrots onions celery cook it all together add your tomato soup little chicken broth if you like to taste and you'll have the most quickest best tomato soup cabbage tomato soup you've ever had so we're going to foil this, but before we do, here it is, tomato soup. And just enough, I guess the two cans was just about right. And then we cover this with foil. And we're going to bake it. I pray that you do the same and that it comes out good for you and that you enjoy it as, as much as we do. Okay, my friends, we are back for the wonderful taste test, my favorite part of our cooking episodes. And just to review, my mom did the 375, and we like to leave it for a good hour and a half. We cover it in aluminum foil, and we put it in for a good hour and a half. And then when you're done, you pull it out, and it looks like this. Amazing. So this Golumpke lasagna, it's absolutely delish. And so I hope you'll make it and take a bite and let us know how yours is. Comment below. Let us know if there's anything else you'd like us to attempt to make or a quick and easy version of it. Let us know anything in the comments below from your favorite episode to uh, recipes that you might have. And make sure you subscribe for more episodes. Just go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring the little bell next to it so you'll get notifications whenever we have a new episode of Life Talk. But for now, God bless you and keep you, and we'll see you next time on Life Talk. Bye-bye.